the change must begin from within you. So Galatians 4.19, Paul says, My little children, in whom I travail, till Christ be formed in you. Yes. Galatians, Galatians 4.19. 4, yes. My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth, until Christ is formed in you. Now, if Christ is not formed within a person, that person can never walk as Jesus walked. He cannot talk as Jesus talked. He cannot think the way Jesus thought. He cannot do the works Jesus did. Even if you try externally, to help the person to conform to religious things. It is outside and it's external. Therefore, when you release the person, eh, you teach the person to pray in church, to read the Bible in church. Release him at home, he doesn't read his Bible. He doesn't pray because, you see, the mechanical religious practice in church does not change a man or a woman. So Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says that be not conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable and perfect or well pleasing will of God. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, this is the real challenge of Christianity. A lot of people go to church, but Monday to Saturday, there's no change. You meet them at the office, you meet them at school, you meet them at Makola, you meet them, you know, in the courts, you meet them in the police uh, office, the army barracks. There is no difference between themselves and somebody who doesn't go to church. But when they are in church, particularly for communion service, the angelic smile and the gentle walk and the pious look can never betray that you quarrel with your wife at home. So, something must happen to change a person in the inside before the outside can change. And as long as we only press the people to conform outside and not be transformed within. We are, you know, we are fetching water with a basket. A lot of Ghanaians who travel outside the country lose their Christianity when they land on the shores of the new country. Because your mommy is not there, your daddy is not there, your pastor is not there, people who scare you into being godly, the, the chains are broken. You are on your own in a wild world of opportunity. Therefore, who cares? Even some people, when they leave the village and get into the city, they disappear. You can't see Christianity around them because, I mean, in the village, everybody knows you, that you are the catechist or you are the presbyteress, and, and therefore you had to conform. But in Accra, who cares? And therefore, you are on your own. So, this month, we want to address the issue of inner change that begins to reflect on your outward 
behavior. There is no change if the pressure is from outside and you pretend and conform and when you are on your own you cannot do it then there is a big deficiency now if you allow me I will launch into introducing what we call the daily quiet time. By far, the most important single event that changes the Christian into the image of Jesus. Did I say event? Process is that daily encounter with God in his presence alone with your Bible and in prayer. One of the first questions I received from your leaders is that is the daily quiet time for the people of the past? Is it something which they did and we not, do not need today? I know why they are asking. 21st century, there are only three names for the century. The first one is fast. Fast, fast, fast. The second one is busy, busy, busy. The third one is no time, no time, no time. From the housewife to the CEO, everybody on the planet now is rushing at such a speed that it makes you know, the jet planes, a tortoise. And our days are packed. You see, it's not like we are just hurrying for nothing. There are a lot of things you have to do from the morning. You have to serve breakfast. You have to get the kids to school. You have to report to work. At work, the demands, WhatsApp, email, phone call, and you, are, and you are on that and Twitter and every moment until you are back with God. Is it, is it that critical? You see, I can't, I, can't I do it once a week? Or once a month sometimes? And you are, you are like where, where, when do you expect me to have time with God now? Do you know when I go to bed? Do you know when I get up? Do, can you imagine what I face each day? Don't tell me that. So, gradually, we are losing the battle for the average Christian to spend time with God. And it is the first thing we throw out. If it's not a spare tire, then we completely leave it behind because you can afford not to have time with God. Yes. Its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. Verse 2. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. You need to understand that 99% of the things you do when you are alive, you can't accomplish them 
except the grace of God helps you. Proverbs 19.21 says that there are many devices in the heart of man, but the counsel of God that shall stand. Verse 1922. 21. 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that reveals. You know, if you would stop a little and begin to observe, you will notice that any day you spend time with God, things work out easier and better than days you don't have time for him. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 puts it very gently. He says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. You must understand that a thousand years is like one day before God. And one day, what you can do in a thousand years, God can do it in one day. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Now, having said that, God can even give you the ability to work a lot, but he will reserve it for the person who loves him. You labor, but you won't eat of it. God can do that. You know, I, I think, is it last week, I heard of somebody who is about to have, go on pension this year and he died. You see, all the entitlements and benefits, he was getting ready to, to have a showdown, a financial landslide, so that he can move in that tsunami. And, and, and do things he had, he had always wanted to do, but he didn't have enough money. And then he's dead now. God can make nonsense of your, your speed. That's the first thing you should notice. But the second one I want to point out to you is that the amount of Break you have in life depends directly on how big God is in your life. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. James chapter 4 verse 6 verse 8. eight. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Just like when you are far away from a mountain, you think you are taller than the But when you get close, then the size and the, the, the awesomeness of the mountain hits you. It's the same. Many of our problems look so big. They loom so big. Because you are very far from God. When you get close to God, then your problem shrinks. You begin to see your problem in the light of, of, of the majesty of God, the glory of God. And suddenly, it doesn't look so threatening after all. Life is such that God is no respecter of persons. What a man sows, that he shall reap. 
If you sow to the spirit, you reap from the spirit. If you sow to the flesh, you reap from the flesh. Galatians chapter 6. Let's read verse 7 and 8. Galatians 6, 7 and 8. Galatians chapter 6, 7 and 8. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to place his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. So basically, we are all sowing. If a whole day you only sow to the flesh, you sow to the things of this world, you reap from there. And if you sow to the spirit, you reap from the spirit. But that's not all. The God, you see, if you are in such a hurry and your inside is so noisy that you cannot have time for God, what happens is that you can't hear him. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 says, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. When you move, you are turning to the left or to the right. Isaiah 30, 21. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. You know, there are some days you, I, I must be at the ministries. Today, I must be at see, see the, uh, the minister of so, so, and so. I must, I must. That morning, as you wait on the Lord, he will tell you that the minister will not be in the office today. But if you are too busy to have a daily quiet time, you will dash into the traffic without combing your hair. You will rush and you will go and queue and only find out that the minister has traveled. Day has been busy, but it has been silly. Psalm 32, verse 8 and 9 says that. God says, I will guide you with my eye. You see, we are walking with a God whose ways of guiding us and walking with us, talking with us, is, is, is very quiet. And, and still and, and you know gentle Psalm 32 8 I'll instruct you and teach you in the way go. I'll counsel you and watch over you I, I'll counsel you I, I'll watch over you with my eye do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding but must be controlled by a bit and bridle or they will not come to you Many times we miss God because we are, we, we are in too much of a hurry. Not only that, this generation is the most stressed generation that has ever walked on this earth. Isaiah 20, which transcends all understanding. It's peace of God which transcends all understanding. People cannot understand how you, you are a CEO and you have peace like this. And how do you manage? They, they, you have five children. Ah! And how, how are you managing that you are still keeping your cool? There is a peace of God which transcends all understanding. We will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You cannot access this if you have no time for God. Now, you say you are busy. I know you are probably more busy than a, a head, JHS head teacher. But are you busier than Jesus? Mark chapter 1. 
before we read the verse uh, 35, let's read from 30, 32. It says that in the evening, people came and they brought to Jesus the sick, demon possessed, and he ministered to them that night. He was busy ministering. Mark yeah. 1. Yes. From 32. That evening after sunset, the mm -hmm. people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. I will be saying this over and over and over, that if you are not intentional about spending time with God every day, you can't. You can't. You need to build that machinery yourself. When you begin, it is a little clumsy. But after some time, you become used to it. Your body listens to you and wakes up because you have set an alarm to wake you up. I don't think you are more busy than Joshua. God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meet the ring day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. So that you will be careful to obey all that is written in it. Joshua then, 1 8. Yes. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. God's way of success and prosperity is the way of finding time to meditate day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Psalm 1 Verse 1 to 3 also confirms that. After that, I want to call one of my daughters, uh, Asida. I want her to come and give a five minute uh, testimony, personal testimony of time, finding time with God. Yes. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does, prospers. Okay. Asida? Ah, good. Thank you. Clap for her. She is an Enfield student from the University of Ghana, marketing. And she is my fourth girl. Hallelujah. So, as Daddy mentioned, my name is Asida. And um, in July last year, I realized that I would have been at the University of Ghana Business School for eight years running. Because I did my undergrad, after that I did my national service with the department. I immediately did two years of masters and I did one more year as a teaching assistant. And um, by July, my lecturer wanted me to stay on, to renew the um, appointment so that I would stay on with him for another year. But as I considered my life, I realized if I don't pause right now, I'm going to keep doing this because by God's grace, I was applying for PhD and I knew that once I begin that, it's going to be another four, five years of just running, running, running. So I decided to just stop. And at first, I was 
um, living on a bit of a cloud because I had saved a little bit. So I wasn't really feeling too much difficulty. I was like, oh, I'm happy, enjoying so much free time. But then after a while when my savings ran out, <laughs> I started realizing that, wow, it was actually a sacrifice to stop working. And I would meet some of my friends and they would ask me, so what are you doing in the house now? And at first I was embarrassed because it was some way to tell them, oh, I'm just taking some time off. But the truth is, I've not just been taking some time off. I've been using this time to grow so much spiritually. For the first time since I became seriously born again, I have time now to spend with my Bible, to do my quiet time, to pray. I used to, I mean, I was, I was born again. I was good, in quotes. <laughs> I was going to church. I was trying to work in the church as much as I could. In the office, I tried to be a light. I was, I mean, I was good. It's not that I wasn't good, but I just didn't really have time for God because even when we're having family devotions in the evening, I would know that tomorrow morning I have to wake up early. So I, either I would be angry and not be paying attention to what they are saying, or I would just get up and go and sleep. Some days I would wake up. I mean, I would think of doing my quiet time, but then I would realize if I don't leave the house now, I'm probably going to get caught up in traffic. I'll be late. So I decided, okay, when I'm in the car, I'll be... Um, using my phone for quiet time and it helped a bit but I was always in such a hurry because I knew that once I get to the office I'm going to be busy 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 so this time that I've been spending at home has just been such a breakthrough for me I've, I've grown so much spiritually I think my family can testify and I myself I know that my relationship with God has deepened so much I have the gift of prophetic dreams and I've always had it I've had it for a while but Back then when I was busy, I would have dreams maybe once a week or longer. And I didn't have time to pray into it or pray about the dreams really. But now I can actually spend time and pray. Almost every night I have two, three, four dreams and I get the interpretation. And they come to pass. And I'm so amazed at how, how I've blossomed and I've been nurtured by just spending the time with God. And recently, whenever I complain to my parents about the fact that, oh, I'm broke, I don't have money. And, you know, sometimes they try, they're like, oh, should we try and help you find somewhere? And I'm like, no, I wouldn't exchange this time for anything. To get back into the rat race of having to run, 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 and then start PhD, run, run, run. I want this time to grow. And by God's grace, I'm making the conviction that even when I begin my PhD, I'm not going to sacrifice this. I have to make time for God. It's easy maybe now because I'm at home. But I know that when I start the PhD, it's going to get difficult. I may have to sacrifice some extra learning time. I may have to sacrifice some friends. I may have to sacrifice some places, some fun, some enjoyments, but I'm determined that I can't lose how much I've come in God because of this time. Amen. This is Moses' big sister. So, let, let me wrap up a little. As you sit here now, you have had habits for a lifetime. Don't expect that when you come to church and hear a sermon, you change. You never change. Those habits have been with you for 10, 20, 30 years. 40, probably, or more. No one sermon can change you. You need time with God and with his word, with the promises of God. You need, you need time to engage the word of God and the spirit of God with your human spirit until a transformation begins from within you. A conviction begins. And when that happens, people notice that you are changing. The way you used to get angry and smack at everybody, suddenly, everybody around is like, hey, mommy, and you are not angry. Hey, 
Something is happening to you. Because they know you. They know that that's how you are. And then, the other one, the other one, you tell lies without knowing. You know, because you are so used to lying. So you tell half-truths, you white lies, exaggerations, and you, you, you do them, you know, consciously and unconsciously. You can't change from one sermon. You need to, to, to have an encounter with God. And that only happens when the word of God, the promises of God, the spirit of God, you know, they work on your inner man and begin a process of transformation. As I speak, I have over 40 quiet time notebooks in the house. And for the past 45 years or so, this, for the past three years, I have changed. So now I'm doing my quiet time online, you know, in the clouds, because I want to save them there so that I can access wherever I am. But I can assure you that to remember Bible verses doesn't just come. It doesn't. You need to find time for God, for his word, and allow his spirit to engrave these words on your heart and burn the promises on your heart. And then, you know, he says, till Christ be formed in you. Then, outside, you can see a difference. This is the reason why somebody can be in the choir but still be flirting. Somebody can be, you know, a catechist but still be drinking alcohol. The, the truth is that change inside you can only happen when the Spirit of God takes the Word of God and pierces your conscience. Then something happens. You become different. People around you notice it. And they say, ah, what's going on? A change has started. So, all we are talking about discipleship has to do with change to be more like Jesus. I, I think we can gamble a last Bible verse. In Exodus chapter 5, verse, I think it's 6, verse 6 to 8. Let's try it. Exodus chapter 5, 6 to 8. That same day, Pharaoh gave this order to the slave drivers and four men in charge of the people. You are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Mm. Let them go and gather their own straw. Yes. But require them to make the same number of bricks as before. Don't reduce the quota. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. Yes. That is why they are crying out, let us go and sacrifice to our God. They are lazy. That's why they are saying, let's go and sacrifice to our God. You can add verse 17. Uh oh. Ah, okay. This is verse 8. Let's take that one too. Let's take the verse 8 too. But require them to make the same number of breaks as before. Don't reduce the quota. They are lazy. Yes. Pharaoh said lazy. That's why 
That's what you are lazy. That's why you keep saying, let us go and sacrifice to the Lord. It is Pharaoh's strategy to keep the people of God busy so that they don't think about sacrificing to God. If he can give us more work and make you more busy and make life more fast, you won't have time to say this quiet time, going to read your Bible, pray eh, all night and fasting. This Leave that. Go and work. Work. You are lazy. That's why. Come on. And the more this world gets busy and fast, the more we lose time, quality time with God. And I can tell you, even in this fast age, if all of you in the house are only texting one another, you text your husband and your, your wife texts you, texts the children, text, and you do not have quality time together. A vital part of life as family is gone. In the office, in church, you feel more human when you interact with other people face to face and talk with them. Nothing can replace time with God. Amen. Supposed to take the questions. Uh, MC. Oh. Right. Thank you very much for your lucid talk. But um, I have a little. Uh, worry about something I don't understand. Um, God's two important characters is love. God is love. That's the character of God. Mm. And uh, the fate of God. These two. Now, um, the type of love that God has, which in, in Greek we call agape love, I think it's extremely difficult for any human being to have that type of love unless probably uh, God drops it into your heart or you cultivate it. But you have the gift of the Holy Spirit and also have the fruit of the Spirit. Um, is the agape love can it be dropped into our heart or do you have to cultivate it and spend more time with God to get it? Or it's a gift that God himself will give you as well as the faith. You say if you have faith like mustard seed, we can move mountains. And that God's faith, uh, I don't know whether he has to drop that faith in our heart or we have to cultivate it. Okay. It's, it's a great question. He is asking about God's love, the agape love, divine love. How do we get it? Is it God who just drops it into your heart? Or do you have to cultivate it? The answer is both. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 25 to 27, the Bible says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will take the heart of stone out of you and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my judgments and my statutes. So, the first thing God does for us is that he changes us from the inside. 
Otherwise, it will be impossible to exercise the God kind of love. But after this change, there is a second step. The indwelling Holy Spirit of God has love which he pours into our hearts. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans 5, 5 says the love of God, yes. Hope does not be disappoint us. God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Now, this is God's initiative. But what happens is no amount of love poured into your heart will mean anything if you do not cooperate with the Holy Spirit for it to come out. And that is exactly what the Bible argues. He says, for example, in 1 John chapter 4, verse, you can read verse 19. He says, we love because we have been loved. He first loved us. So that is what touches us to love. Uh, John 4, 19. We love because he first loved us. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 says that the love of Christ constrains us. That he died for us, so we should no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died for us. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And 15. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So this is where faith comes in. If you do not believe that God has poured his love in your heart, if you do not believe that the Holy Spirit, the, his fruit is love, you cannot access it. And this is where the daily quiet time comes in. Because you need to interact with this truth and trust the God who has poured his love in your heart enough to, to, to make the machine work. Because you can't love your wife when she is unlovable except the supernatural love of God in you begins to ooze out. This is it. You can never really change and have divine love if you do not engage this love of God which has been poured in your heart by faith and the grace of God. It's like computer language. They say activate. You see, you, you need to activate. It is a bank deposit in your account. But it is not yours until you engage it. And this is where the daily quiet time comes in. I, I pray that next week and the, 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 the two or three weeks ahead of us, we'll be able to make, to take hold of these things strongly enough. Yes. And with that, we have run out of time. Um, don't worry. We, we will I, I want to make a call for prayer. If you are here, you are facing serious challenges with time. It's difficult for you to find 15 or 30 minutes daily to have a time alone, quality time alone with God. I want to pray with you. 
I want to pray with you. I don't know how you would want to do it, whether you want to stand where you are. I think that will work. You can stand where you are. I want to pray with you. You are facing serious challenges with your time. One guy said he, he has dropped going to work by, with his car. He takes trotro so that he can have his quiet time because he is not driving. So he in the trotro, it's inconvenient, but he can read his Bible and spend time with God. Okay, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for every life standing before you. You created us. You bought us with the blood of your son. Our times are in your hand. Even as they stand in your presence, I'm praying right now that they will have a supernatural encounter that will rearrange what they do with time in the name of Jesus. And every clutter that the enemy is trying to use to distract them today, I break its power in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, I ask for your touch. I ask, Lord, for a visitation that will, will make a difference in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Please sit. Big crap offering. Thank you so much. This is a poor taste of things to come. So don't miss one week. If you miss it, then you will have lost a lot of things. Because it helps us to do the things God wants us to do. May we have our offer tree, please. The ladies, please. Your heart. 
Alléluia. Shall we call our father, Reverend, Right Reverend Jabin, to pray for EFK and the office, please. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share in your word and to be part of this ministration tonight. We thank you for the gracious words, deep insights that have been shared tonight. And we pray that you will grant us the grace to be able to imbibe these deep thoughts, reflect and meditate over them till they, till they become part of us. And at this juncture, we want to commit your servant, the preacher, to your care. Our prayer is that you continue to bless him and give him more insight so that whenever and wherever he appears, he will minister to your people. Tonight, too, we come before you with our offerings and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you accept them and continue to bless us so we will crave and desire and to work with the Holy Spirit to be like you. We thank you for hearing us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Uh, the breakfast meeting on Saturday, 9 to 12, for, with uh, Justice Samuel Marvel, South. So, everybody is invited. Don't leave at home. Come and enjoy. Have a good breakfast and have the word of God. What else do you need when you can have the two together? So, do come and enjoy it. And next week, as I say, this is a foretaste of things to come. So, don't forget to be here next Wednesday, 5.30 sharp. No lateness. Don't come, otherwise, you miss a lot. You miss the beginning. And it's no good missing the beginning when you don't know the ending. So here, 5.30, so that we can have a good time with JFK. Thank you very much. And God bless all of us. Yes? Well, the tickets are all there. It's only 50 CDs. I know it sounds so much, but 50 CDs, I don't think you can even get a, a sandwich anywhere. It's so to have a whole breakfast and have somebody to talk to you about God on top of it. If you don't want this, what else do you need? So please do come. Thank you. Shall we stand? Perhaps hold hand to the person next to you. Father, we are departing from your house, but we are not departing from your presence. Go with us to our various destinations in safety. So when we come back again, we can give praise and glory to your name. We praise thee for hearing us in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you very much.